Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. It is Tuesday, September 22nd. Okay, real quick question. Raise your hand if you're tired of tropical systems. I'm going to start with myself. I'm done with this. Man, we feel sorry for a lot of the folks who may be facing some flooded roadways. Be safe if you've got to go anywhere today. Some of the Houston area, from what I'm hearing, has had more than 13 and a half inches of rain in the last 24 hours. Tropical Storm Beta, yeah, we ran out of storm names about two storms ago. Uh, it was going to be Wilfred, now it's Tropical Storm Beta, we're back to the Greek alphabet. Uh, that is uh, roaring through at a clip of three miles an hour, it's somewhere near Rockport now, but all the rain is coming this way, so that's the big news you need to know. You've probably seen it on every TV station in the market right now, but uh, there you go, there's your friendly weather update. Be careful if you have to go anywhere today. All right, Brittany and uh, Frank, I've got two co-hosts today. Good morning. We're going to start with Frank. Good morning to you, Frank. Good morning. Uh, I know Beta is here, but I'm more of an alpha myself, so I just want to let you guys know. So, um, But I'm great. Uh, just so you guys know, let's, let's grow the show, please. Let's get on YouTube. Let's hit the notification bell. You know what I'm saying? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Follow the show. Follow the show is right. And of course, uh, we've also got Brittany Pacheco, who's joining us from her home studio. You know, Frank, Brittany's got her own home studio these days. She is high tech. We're paying her too much. Apparently. Hey, I mean, if you're alpha male, uh, Frank, you should, you know, step up your game because, I mean, you know me, I like a good competition. But I was going to say, Todd, about the weather is that uh, I actually do have to go out later today for a dentist appointment. So that's over there off of I-10. So that's going to be an interesting drive from uh, where I'm staying to uh, to the I-10. But yes, as Todd had said, you know, be sure to uh, be safe out there. Don't drive unless you absolutely have to. Um, I know there's been a lot of questions about whether our lab-based courses are continuing at this time. And at this time, all I can say is I don't have an update, but be sure to check our hcs.edu website for alert updates. That's right. We will keep you up to date on the website, hccs.edu at all times. Always go to the website. Brittany, I might think of rescheduling that appointment later today. This, uh, this weather is not supposed to let up. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm going to call them after we're done with up to the minute just to find out. But, you know, it's it's few and far between with these dentist appointments. So maybe. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I had to schedule mine for late in the month because that's all they had open. So I, I understand where you're coming from. So today we're doing something a little different. We've got three guests. Uh, all of them are talking about the radio industry. They all have connections to the local radio industry. And, you know, with this whole COVID thing, a lot of us are working remotely. And that's even forced a number of broadcasters to re rethink the way they're doing things and to maybe do some remote broadcasting. We've joined by three of them. One of them also works here at HCC TV, Jim Moran. He's a producer, a videographer. He does just about everything for HCC TV. He's a former music director and DJ for KPFT. Good morning, Jim. Hey guys, nice to see you all. Even though I haven't seen you in half a year, it's still nice to see you virtually. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's weird because we have face to face meetings on Zoom every weekday for HCC TV. So we still see each other, but it's hard to believe it's been six months since we've seen each other in person. Very strange. Well, we're going to move on to some of our other guests. We've got uh, another fo another person, uh, the former general manager of KPFT, a current DJ, and he's also an adjunct professor of communications at the University of St. Thomas, Dwayne Bradley. Good morning, Dwayne. Good morning, Todd. Great to be on with you and uh, Frank, Brittany, and uh, everybody else here today. Well, it's good to see you. We're going to have more with you in a moment. Of course, University of St. Thomas, one of the partners of HCC. We always appreciate having our partners on the air. Another person I've known for, gosh, almost 30 years. Uh, yep. We used to work together, and I'm going to let him tell you where. Doug O'Brien, he's now an on-air personality for the Eagle, local classic rock, and also uh, works their social media as well. Good morning, Doug. Good morning, Todd, everybody. Yeah, so, Todd, and I, Todd and I have known each other for a while. Uh, we used to work at a karaoke bar. Yeah. Some 25, 30 years ago. It seems like lifetimes ago. It does. Todd, Todd would uh, do the music and I would be the M MC and we basically kind of did a morning show 
We and just inter we entertained ourselves, really. <laughs> the yeah, the audience, I, the, the club, singers we didn't the matter. Being entertained, there was no one else there at that club. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So, Odd Doug on karaoke. This I have to see, Doug. If you can like send us anything from back in the day that no, has Todd like in front of a camera doing his thing or whatever, send it see, our way. We have to we have to promote this. That's one of the beauties about being in this business for so long. There weren't video cameras and Facebook and well, Snapchat back then as much, you know, as much. As much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could get away with more and forget a lot. It was funny because you could for $20, you could take your performance. True. We record it from the control room in the booth yep. and uh, it would be 20 bucks. And of course, they'd always tip us on top of that. That was like yep. And that, but yep. uh, yeah, there may be some tapes floating around, but I can safely say I don't think we'll ever find them or they could. I, I don't them. have any, I can tell you that right now. Yeah, None, I don't yeah, I don't, don't either. But uh, challenge anyway. accepted, challenge accepted. <laughs> challenge. Well, good luck there, Brittany. Maybe you could find uh, some YouTube performances from us, but we'll uh, I'll challenge you for finding that. So, <laughs> so Doug, I know I follow you on social media. You're very active. Um, you usually do a lot of social media live broadcasts from the DJ booth. But over the COVID thing, when this first started, I know a number of DJs, including yourself, were doing some remote broadcasting as well. Yeah, COVID, uh, I think, not only changed radio during this time, but I think it's going to change radio uh, from here on out. I, I think radio managers, uh, program directors, VPs kind of now see that things can be done uh, without having to be in the studio. Uh, and that includes sales. Um, that we, I know, are changing the way we're doing things. But uh, this laptop that I have in front of me is where I would broadcast right here in front of this brick wall. And uh, I would remote in to two different computers uh, to be able to broadcast. And it, it was similar to being on air, but not quite the same. It's a total, because every DJ, for those that don't know, every DJ, when you go into a studio, you set it up the way you want. You know where everything is to where literally you could grab what you need or hit a button without having to look around if you've been doing it for a while. When you do it from home, it is chaos you're trying to control and you don't know where anything is and you're using multiple screens. It's a challenge, uh, but there are upsides. Well, one of the upsides, um, I heard a rumor that you've been able to broadcast from the pool at your yes. uh, pool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they say, you make lemonade out of lemons. So, uh, yeah, uh, this apartment complex is set up kind of like a little fortress, and we all overlooked the pool, and it was a beautiful day. My job as a DJ, I believe, is to uh, share experiences others can't have, like going to concerts, meeting you know uh, musicians and artists, but also to be like everybody else. And I thought, well, let's just go to the pool. I know a lot of people are at home working. So yeah, I broadcasted from the pool. So, you know, like I said, there are perks. There are perks. Dwayne, I'm gonna ask you the same thing. Um, you uh, work for a different animal, KPFT, yeah. but uh, how is the, the how has the change been at KPFT with remote broadcasting? Have you guys been doing that? Or are you still doing that? We have been locked out of the old house on Lovett Boulevard there in Montrose. Uh, that 105 year old building since the third week of March. And so we basically now create our programs here on Zoom, just like this. Uh, we pre record them and send files into the engineer who then sets it up through an automation system. For example, the program, my program, Open Journal, airs live 6 to 7 p.m. on Mondays, and it's a, it's a magazine style show. And we record it typically three or four days in advance. So last week's program, we recorded it on Thursday. And then Ruth Bader Ginsburg passes away the very next day. So over the weekend, we had to just kind of get together actually Sunday afternoon, do a quick recut of the opening of the show to incorporate that into our opening discussion so that we didn't sound totally out of touch with what was going on in the real world. But uh, no one's been in the building for a long time. People are learning how to 
take uh, essentially some of the DJs are taking Spotify playlists and pasting yeah. it in and sending those types of things in to create wow. shows. Some guys are going back and pulling tapes they did back in the 80s and doing like a greatest hits retrospective. So you're hearing some really vintage stuff like announcements for places that don't even exist anymore that's pretty cool though i'd love to hear that <laughs> usually you find it as archives on on the the internet you know yeah yeah exactly Dwayne, so let me, it's, uh, it's a new world yeah and, and i imagine yeah it's a new world but you said you have been locked out of um the old the station since march yeah so you guys haven't been back in there. Are you using a digital platform like Zoom or Teams or anything like that for when you uh, aggregate your interviews and, and your guests? Yeah, absolutely. We use Zoom to bring the whole team together, bring our guests together. And then we have part of our team. I'm, you know, I'm the co-host and producer, but I'm also one of only five people, you know, all volunteers right. doing this hour. So I've got a couple of editors who work and are just magic and they can they can do everything put it put that file from zoom into a program called audacity and then you know shine it up and make it sound like a perfect 58 minutes each week it's it's really quite remarkable what they do i you know for me editing is an old school job that i yeah. i would use with a razor blade on a little block back you know way too many years ago right <laughs> I remember those. Doug, let me ask you, are you using Zoom or Teams or how do you guys, I know in the TV world years ago, we used to call it tunnel in, but how are you guys getting your signal in there? Well, what happens with us uh, for radio is with they had to give us all laptops that right. then have links to the computer. So what I do is I dial up into a computer back at the radio okay. station then I get into what's called wide orbit, which is the program we use uh, with the music. Then I'm able to literally uh, have total control of the radio station. I can add songs, remove songs. And it's when we say it's live, it's live. It's basically uh, live to tape is really right. what it is. So we do it a little ahead of time just in case there's a problem. And then I, they have voice tracks plugged in. And so I plug them into the spot. The only time we use Teams, uh, we use Microsoft Teams, is if we have to have um, a meeting, you know, the, the PD wants to get us together, you know, right. for a jock meeting. That's the only time we do that. The rest of it, um, they literally, which tells you how crazy things are, they literally put this multi-million dollar uh, radio station in my hands in this apartment. And it's that easy. just tells you how nutty things are what technology has gotten us. You know, one uh, person I know spent a lot of time at that old building for KPFT, I love it. Jim Moran, in fact, I think I joined Jim a few times over there and uh, may have brought a few brewskis in to meet with you, Jim, back in those days. That we, We're talking back in the 80s, folks. We're the, good <laughs> the good old days. The good old days. Jim, can you imagine a world back, because you were the music director at KPFT many years ago, can you imagine a world where uh, we're in a pandemic and uh, all the DJs are no longer going into the building, they're all broadcasting remotely? No, I didn't see this coming. I, I'm sure a lot of people didn't imagine this. Um, I started at KPFT in 1986, and I always had an interest in being a DJ, a radio DJ in particular, and uh, KPFT was the station that gave me a chance to do it. And when I started, I stayed for uh, nine yeah. years, and I, I, I really had such a great time there, and it led me to do a lot of other stuff and, and figure out how a radio, and also it helped my photography and video uh part of, of my business do well as, as well. And I got to meet so many great people. Uh, so props to KPFT for being around since, well, Dwayne's got a great story, but it is a story about KPFT back in 1971. And a lot of people don't know this, but Dwayne would be better to tell it than me, but uh, I, I'll give you the trivia. The first song I ever played on KPFT was uh, Here Comes the Sun. And then uh, some other stuff happened that didn't live up maybe to the bright, happy song that the Beatles wrote back then. Do you want to tell them, Dwayne? Well, sure. There's a long version and a short version, so feel free to cut me off. But, 
You know, KPFT was born on March 1st, 1970. Like Jim said, this brand new Beatles album provided the like opening track to KPFT's life. Uh, and 1970 Houston was a vastly different city, not quite right. as cosmopolitan and international and diverse as we are today. You know, we are America's future now. But back then it was uh, arguably a, a wee bit more of a redneck kind of orientation in terms of the power structure, largely dominated by white men and including the police force uh, and, and including a large presence by the KKK, which uh, I noticed the, when I first moved here in 1970 as a high school student, we rode the loop in our family station wagon just to see what this new town was like. And we saw a Klan rally happening over on 225 in front of some of those oil storage depots. And I was like, where have we moved to? That we are, wow. you know, we are on the road to hell here. We're on the uh, wrong, <laughs> wrong place, wrong city. Get me out of here. But uh, KPFT had just been born that summer, uh, that spring. And in, in the spring, like less than two and a half months after coming on the air, the KKK found out where the transmitter shack was, which was in a cow pasture out in far southwest Houston near the intersection of Fondren and South Main. They went out there, put some dynamite on the little shack and blew it up and the station was knocked wow. off the air. Wow. Uh, it took about three weeks to fix it. They came back on in June 1st. You know, then come October, uh, they went back out there with 15 pounds of dynamite, blew this thing to smithereens. KPFT was knocked off the air for the next four months. It didn't get reborn until uh, January 21st of 1971. And that's when I discovered it because I was watching TV to find this great radio station because on, on channel eight, they used to have a show called the great American dream machine. Yeah. It's like the Rowan and Martin laugh in hour, but it was a public TV version of it. So it wasn't as funny. But they went live to Houston, Texas, to downtown where the studios were, uh, behind the old Alley Theater, which is now a parking garage. They went to that building, did a ceremonial flipping of a switch, and then Arlo Guthrie was in the basement playing Alice's Restaurant, which I was going to say, tell song. me he was playing wow. Alice's Restaurant. Tell me that was happening. He was playing Alice's Restaurant. He said, let me finish the song. I guess I ought to finish it because that's the song that was partially played they were maybe 12 minutes into the 18 minute song when it got blown up the first time so he came on it was live coast to coast i found out about this great radio station and i started volunteering not too long after that but here's a quick, si a quick sidebar since we're uh, media folks uh, i don't know if all the folks at hcc are old enough to remember a channel 13 consumer reporter throw down roach blue glasses, white hair dude named Marvin Zindler, slime in the ice machine, man. But, uh, but when that first bombing happened, it was just outside the city limits. So the HPD would not investigate. The FBI didn't realize this is a federally licensed facility. This is in our jurisdiction. So it took them a week before they got involved. So it fell to the Harris County Sheriff's Department. Who did they send out as an investigator? It was Marvin Zeller. Yeah, because that's what he was doing when he started with 13. He was working <laughs> for the Sheriff's Department. Amazing. Yep. What yeah. an incredible story, Dwayne, how times have changed since Boy, then. Boy, howdy. <laughs> Amazing. Doug, I want to get to you. We've got a few moments left, but I know um, you're active in social media. How has that changed or maybe increased since this COVID thing started with you? And, uh, you know, let, I imagine that's probably going on the rise, too. Have your followers increased? You're getting a lot more traction there? Um, yeah, but what I'm seeing, uh, you kind of have to make a decision, as, uh, as especially a DJ, when, when it comes to uh, the, the other guys on the panel here, public is different because you have a responsibility to give news along with entertainment and everything else. As, as a DJ for, <clears throat> excuse me, a classic rock station, uh, I'm an idiot and my job is to merely entertain. And you're laughing because you know it's true. M my job is to merely entertain. If you're coming to me for the news, things have seriously gone awry, okay? <laughs> so. So we don't so get our news off the eagle. Okay, got that. No, well, at least not from me, not from me. So the, my point is, is that uh, you have to find ways to distract and entertain because as much as people want the news, 
and they want to know about COVID. They also want to escape from it. They want to get away from it. So um, that is probably the hardest thing is finding something else to talk about and to kind of stay away from. For me, it's a a distraction. I consider myself a a daily distraction, uh, just a place where you can go and enjoy music. And hopefully I can say something that will make you laugh, whether it's intentional or not. And that that is my that's my job and that's with the social media it's doing things like that still finding things you can do in the city while social distancing sure. you know like, like recently went kayaking down buffalo bayou through downtown yeah. Yeah. so doing things like that and sharing it with the audience uh, i feel like that's my responsibility is hopefully uh, to be a, a court jester, if you will. <laughs> Doug O'Brien, it's always great seeing you. We appreciate you Same. joining us this morning. And you can Thank listen you. on the Eagle. When are you on the air next? Uh, I'll be on this afternoon. I'm filling in for uh, Scott Sparks. So I'll be on at 3 o'clock talking about this beautiful weather that we're Live having. Live at 5 today, preview. Who are you featuring? Do you know? I do not know yet. I have not seen the music log. So oh. that that is my life. I walk in and that's when I know what's Here's happening. Every too. day, every day I get up and I have to look at my calendar to see what I'm doing because it changes uh, within hours. It, it changes so often. So uh, tune in at that time and find out because I have no clue. Doug, we appreciate you being here. Dwayne, it's uh, it's great meeting with you and hearing your stories. I could listen to them all day long. Unfortunately, we don't have that much time, but we appreciate you joining us. And uh, we appreciate Thanks the work you do me. at University of St. Thomas. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And Jim, always good to see you, even though I see you every day. It's great to see you again. Thanks for joining us here on the show and uh, letting us know a little bit how, you, how KPFT used to be. Oh, absolutely. So happy to be here. Absolutely. Thanks to all three of you. Uh, we're going to move on down to our HCC news and information. Brittany Pacheco is, uh, you've got your hand up, Brittany. Do you want to jump in? Oh, I mean, I, I enjoyed having uh, these three radio personalities here with us this morning. Um, Doug, you talked about Scott Sparks. I actually remember him when he was on, uh, I think it was 104 KRBE back in the yep. day. So yep. that's like a nice throwback to my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we're, we have quite a few uh, that have been around a while. Jennifer Tyler, Scott Sparks, Kelly Ryan, Dina Raj. Uh, yeah, they, they've been around. For me, I've been more of a journeyman. This is my third or fourth stint in Houston. But uh, yeah, th- those guys have been around a while. Yeah. I'm, no, not, it's I'm not, not saying they're old. They've just been around a while. <laughs> that just means you have more experience. I mean, exactly. On. Exactly. Good way uh, of putting it, Brittany. Yeah, different different times back then in those days, but uh, great to oh, hear yeah. from all three of you. Thanks again for you guys joining us. Brittany and Frank, HCC News and Information. Of course, uh, yesterday was the first day of second start semester, so now the drive, of course, is going to be for our spring semester. And if you've got any needs for wanting to know what you can register for, registering for the spring, go to hccs.edu slash now. Brittany, what else you got? So, Todd, we've been talking all week long about being all in for HCC. So this is just a friendly reminder to our faculty and staff that our HCC students are in need of our support to stay on track financially to graduate. So you can sign up for a payroll deduction today and your gift will yield an impact for a full year. This is ongoing until November 6th. You can donate today by going to hccs.edu slash all in for HCC. And if you're sharing this on social media, don't forget to use the hashtag all in for HCC. There's also something happening with the Minority Business Development Association, the MBDA. They're doing a a seminar called Exporting Your Way to a Brighter Future, Frank. Yes. So that's that's going to be from 930 to 1030. I mean, from 9 to 1030 a.m. every Tuesday through October 27th. So they'll be talking stuff about international business development plans, foreign market entry plans, uh, contract and legal issues, and much more. So they're partnering up with the Department of Commerce and a district export council. So to register and to, to, to register, check out our social media after the show for more information on our Facebook page. Students, if you got questions for tutoring, technology, textbooks, we have a one-stop shop for you, a place you can stop to get all those answers. Download them by going to uh, hccs.edu slash online hyphen toolkit. We'll have that post in or the link to this uh, to this website in our post, but you can go there to get all your questions answered. Uh, Brittany, are you a life hacker? I'd rather not say, Todd. 
I feel like I'm going to incriminate myself if I do admit to that. <laughs> well, Student Life has got a virtually active session. It's called Life Hacking. That's coming up. Yes, it's basically coping with online courses with strong study skills and time management, because let's face it, since we've had to move to an online platform for the majority of our classes, students have been struggling because it's not their forte. I get it. I understand. So Student Life is doing their part to holding WebEx sessions that teaches strategies and identify tools to manage online courses. This is happening uh, today at 1 p.m. So be sure you visit the, well, there's various ways you can you can visit for these events. So we'll get to, into it just a little bit in a little bit, but we're also gonna talk a little bit about your voice counts. Today is National Voter Registration Day. This is a very important aspect of a young person's life. Well, not just a young person, but everyone's life. It's our duty to make sure that our voices are heard. So we want to make sure that your voice is going to be count towards this election year. So you can join Student Life for this WebEx session with the Harris County Clerk's Office, uh, the Harris County Elections Department, and the Voters Registration's Office. This is happening today, tonight at 6 p.m. Also, we want you to rock the vote. Uh, party with a purpose. I mean, what's, I mean, I like parties, but this is an even better, right. better idea. So come and party with HCC Student Life via Zoom as we encourage students to rock the vote with great music and giveaways. This is happening this upcoming Thursday, September 24th at 1 p.m. My goodness, Student Life has got a lot going yeah, on. Yeah, in fact, we've got a lot of things going on, including the NCAS college webinar and uh, confident presentation skills. Plus, they've got something talking about who's on the ballot for the upcoming SGA elections. All that information can be found in this post, so just look for it and we'll give you the links to everything and let you know where you can find it. Uh, Susan G. Komen, Virtual Race for the Cure, that's in the link for this post. And Hispanic Heritage Month, a lot of things going on once again. We're running out of time, so we're going to let you know that you can find that information in there along with the COVID, uh, we've got COVID-19 testing going on here at HCC campuses. That information is in this post as well. Frank. Before we leave, I want to get to a couple of things because we had a big weekend for sports. Uh, the Astros played their last home game, I think, at home. Justin Verlander could have played his last game as an Astro or his last game ever. Yeah, that was dreadful news. I think that came down Sunday evening yeah. that he had yeah, he's gonna have ground surgery. And there was there was a lot of controversy in the beginning of that because I think a Houston reporter reported that like a month ago and he yeah. got in trouble for it. And, and they were like, no, no, it's not going to take me out for the season. Now he's not being the, you know, are they, I, you know, are they going to the playoffs? Is it still on the possibility? Is yeah, that I think they're locked in now uh, at this point, they're just, they're just playing for seating in it right now. Yeah. Uh, they're the six seed. So if the playoffs were to start today, they'll play the Oakland A's, which the, I think, I think they're the division leader in the AL West right now. Right. Of course, college football continue this weekend. Some games on a lot of games being played. U of H, I, I, I don't know what's going on there. We're going to have a season. We're not going to have a season. Are we playing football this year? What's happening, Frank? Yeah, that it, it's it, they're, waff, they're, they're waffling. They're going back and forth of whether or not they're going to play or not. And, I mean, if, if it's this much waffling, I, I don't think you should play. If you, if, You've missed if, four maybe. games. Four games. There's no way we're going to reschedule. Though. Now, granted, it's not their fault. The other teams canceled. One was canceled because of the pandemic. Other teams had some players testing positive for COVID, but how do you make up four games in a shortened season to begin with? It's nearly impossible. Like in, in, in baseball, you can, because in baseball, it's not as physical. You can play double headers. You can shorten right. the innings. In football, you can't make up four games in the fall. Like I know the Big Ten is coming out. They said they're going to play this, this year as well. They'll play eight games, eight games in eight weeks, which is tough on the body. So if, you're, yeah. if, you have, if you have a game where, you know, a team can't play due to, due to testing, then there's no margin for error. So it's going to be very interesting Interesting these next couple uh, months of how this stuff plays out. Yeah, it's painful to be a Houston Cougar fan. We just haven't seen any football yet this year. Professional football looks like they're successfully going through with the season. I didn't think it was going to happen, but they've had uh, tests every week. And so far, none of the players have tested positive, at least for the last week. Yeah, so if you if you look at the landscape of NFL, a lot of a lot of teams don't have fans. Some of the teams have maybe like twenty five percent capacity, but the big issue that's going on right now, I know week two just closed. We have a rash of injuries all throughout from like big name stars, 
And now uh, players are complaining about, you know, not enough prep time from training camp. Do you think that preseason really meant a lot more than, than I think they were thinking of getting away with them preseason? They can't do that. No, you, you can't. I mean, I know the 49ers alone, they lost four starters, including the quarterbacks yeah. today. You know, I know uh, I, I know a couple of players from the uh, from the Jets got nicked up as well. Um, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough, man. Like, um, if if this continues to happen, I don't know if we'll be able to finish the season if star players continue to go down. Yeah, that's going to be very challenging. Wait till a star quarterback goes down, you know, and that unfortunately that just seems like it's happening all around. Uh, the Texans continue in their losing ways. There's one thing for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, they they, they played Baltimore Sunday, and that was a, that was a, a a routine Sunday ritual of getting getting bashed in by Baltimore. It happened last year as well. So, well, we usually we have the 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 the, the yearly loss to New England. We haven't gotten that out of the way yet. So, but no. uh, Baltimore was able to take care of business. Yeah, no, not yet. And and break up the Raiders, man. They're two and zero. The Las Vegas Who Raiders. That? Yeah, it's well, it's now yeah the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, who yeah. would have thought that, boy? Yeah. Well, you know, Frank, it's an interesting world we live in. We'll talk more about it on Friday when you join us again. Thanks for being here today. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Good seeing you. All right, Brittany. Tomorrow we've got some special guests. Yes. So tomorrow Wednesday we will welcome Dr. Christina Robinson, who is HCC's. Executive Director of Adult Education, who is also on the Mayor's Board for Adult Literacy. This is very cool. Um, that group is doing a drive for literacy to distribute 35,000 books by this Saturday. That's yeah. an amazing initiative. <clears throat> We're also, also joining Christina tomorrow will be the Director of the Mayor's Board, uh, Federico Salas, and we are looking forward to talking to both of them about this worthy cause. That's right. Uh, you know, it's also Wednesday. I imagine the Chiefs going to be here too. Uh, you know what? That that's a really good question. Everyone's yeah. just going to have to tune in tomorrow to find out. He's usually here every Wednesday, so we'll have to see. Thanks for being here on the show today. Great show today. Glad to have you with us for Frank Cooper and Brittany Pacheco. I'm Todd Duplantis. We'll see you tomorrow morning live at 10 a.m.